Meet Mark Myers. He's been fascinated by nature's engineering tricks ever since a boyhood encounter in a Brazilian forest. My father was hunting, and I saw this entire toucan skeleton, and then I picked up the beak, and I was amazed at how light it was and how strong it was. The memory stayed with him for 30 years until he happened to stumble across, of all things, a toucan farm. There, he made a startling discovery. In the toucan's amazing beak, nature has constructed a large, lightweight, and amazingly tough structure. Nice! He wanted to know how. I'd like to know why. Conservationist Joan Embry is on hand to explain. What is the point of this huge beak? I mean, it does look a little ridiculous. Well, they're primarily a fruit eater, and that extends their reach. They use it as a screwdriver. They use it to find food. Also works defensively as a dagger. The edges are serrated. You tell me that now, when the thing is like six inches from my eye? That's why you're holding the tame toucan. Oh! When Mark analyzed the beak of a dead bird, he found that it was made out of two different materials neither one of which is strong. On the outside is the shell. Okay, oh, it's like bendable plastic. It feels like a, like a fingernail. If the beak was just like this, it would flex. It, would, it couldn't grab anything. The inside of the shell is filled with bone, but bone that's so full of air pockets, it's as weak as styrofoam. I just show it to you how I can break it, you see? Right, nothing. And oh, you should try to. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's foam, so it, it snaps. Well, it would snap if I had any upper body strength. The thin shell and the foamy bone. Neither one is tough, but when combined... You can see that this is the foam, mm -hmm. and then we have the shell. Right, each by itself is weak. Is weak. I can show, yeah, if you pull out, you can bend this here very easily, you see? Yeah. And, uh, and this I could snap if, if it weren't an important teaching tool for you. That's right. Yeah. And now if you take and them. try to bend these two together. Oh, see? wow. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like super lightweight concrete. It, it right. feels, feels like nothing. It is strong and it is, uh, it is very lightweight. Mark was amazed that evolution had solved such a difficult engineering problem. So he began looking for other examples of animal engineering, which soon led him from the jungle to the beach. This is your lab? <laughs> you work in a wetsuit on a table by the ocean? For today it is. <laughs> I've been uh, studying actually, Dave, these shells, the abalone for some years because they are very, very strong. The abalone has evolved to have a very tough shell, which protects it from the pounding surf and from predators like sea otters. <laughs> what is this shell? made of it's not you're saying it's not like other shells it's calcium carbonate which is the same as chalk chalk huh. but it's much much stronger than chalk yeah chalk is not especially strong i noticed by pure coincidence there's a piece of chalk right here and i don't i don't think of chalk as sea otter proof i mean it just crumbles it crumbles the fact that it pulls apart so easily shows that chalk has very little tensile strength or toughness but that's not the end of the story Mark tells me not to be fooled by chalk's apparent weakness because it's actually a very strong material. And I was never any good with dominoes. <laughs> now, you said that this is weak, right? Yeah. You broke it with your... Uh, My bare hands. Yeah, now I, I'll, I'll show to you that you can put your entire weight here. Uh, if you step carefully here... Can step... I use you as a ladder? Yeah. All right. Put more, more, more in the middle. More yeah. in the middle? Yeah, yeah. You've got to be kidding me. This is going to no, no, shatter no. them like glass. See? Wow! 185 pounds of pure muscle. Yes. Look at that. What's going on here? Chalk can withstand tremendous pressure. It's called compressive strength, and it's a property of ceramics. The stuff of pottery, bricks, and the cement in concrete. But ceramics also have a weakness bend them, drop them, shoot them, or even take a hammer to them. For your $25 pledge, we'll send you this handsome coffee mug. And they shatter. Ow. 
As with other materials, the strength or weakness of ceramics is determined by how their atoms bind together. Chalk is made of calcium, carbon, and oxygen atoms, which are bonded together tightly with no wiggle room. They can't slide past each other. That lets them stand up to tremendous pressure. But if a small crack manages to open a space between the atoms, it can quickly spread. That's why materials like chalk, even though they have high compressive strength, often seem fragile. Take glass, another fragile material. Mark insists that it also has high compressive strength, even more than chalk. Frankly, that seems hard to believe. Okay, here we go. Gonna wind up with an ankle full of glass. Oh my gosh, the chalk is one thing, but these little skinny wine glass stems, something else entirely. Now, are you willing to try it with three or two? No. Three glasses! Three glasses! Where's the Cirque du Soleil agent when you need him? That's amazing. Right, you Mark, did it. Explain this in science terms quick. Ceramics and glasses, when we compress them, they are very, very strong. Stronger than metals. OK. Should we All try right. one? Yes, let's go for it. One glass. Let's one glass, let's people. Whoa, whoa. Oh my God! I can't believe it. How is this possible? You did it, Dave. You I'm did amazing. it. That's the world record. Oh my gosh! One glass, people. One glass. Watch quickly. <laughs> While that is impressive, the abalone shell blows glass and chalk out of the water, so to speak. Like the toucan shell, it combines two materials to make its fortress of strength and protection. Its shell is 95% calcium, carbon, and oxygen, just like the chalk. But it doesn't have the same brittle weakness. It's not fragile. You're saying this is 95% the same as this, yeah. but try this, to break this. this one, really? Yeah, go ahead. This, this would cost a fortune at the gift shop. No, go ahead, I, 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 yeah, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I were a sea otter, I would be a terrible failure. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's completely, no. The shell demonstrates both compressive strength and toughness, the ability to absorb energy without breaking thanks to the way that the abalone has engineered its protective cover on a microscopic scale. As it constructs its shell, the abalone gathers calcium, carbon, and oxygen from the environment to build rows of tiny hexagonal plates. Each plate is brittle, but between the layers, the abalone inserts a protein, a long biological chain. That small addition acts like a shock absorber between the plates. The resulting shell is far less brittle, much tougher, and more crack resistant than simple chalk. As we learn to apply the lessons of microscopic structure, engineers may one day build pressure resistant ceramics and glass from the atom up. Beautiful buildings of sculpted concrete that will never crack and will last a thousand years or a deep sea city with a spectacular view.